So I'm Dorothy Maxwell and um, on behalf of the UK government, I run the uh, Sustainable Clothing Roadmap. The results really so far have been about bringing the industry together across the supply chain of clothing and also bringing um, clear facts on where it's most effective to focus attention in terms of both environmental but also ethical improvements and then uh, getting the first set of agreed actions from industry, both individual ones and collaborative ones, on how we can move some of those key um, areas for improvement forward. You have global brands with you like Adidas and Nike and so on. What motivated them to be a part of this project? Well, I think for any company working on sustainable, well, producing clothing at the moment, sustainability is a key part of the business case. So because the roadmap is very much focusing on this on a facts basis and wanting to work collaboratively with the industry, I think it's, been, it's made sense that, that a lot of these brands who are looking at this anyway individually have, have also come together to, to work with us too. Can they uh, bring a lot of knowledge themselves? Oh, very much so, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the sector is making the clothes, so they know these issues better than anybody. How can you work on a national level, like in the UK, when clothing is made in, in overseas in China and so on, and it's a global uh, mission at the same time? Yeah, um, it's been very challenging because 90% of the clothes we consume in the UK are imported from a range of other countries, China, India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Turkey. So what we've done is our strategy has been to focus on the organizations who are putting the big volumes of clothing onto the UK market and, and encouraging them to work with us in key focus areas that will bring improvements back across their supply chains. And a number of them are doing this kind of work already, so they provide great front-runner examples of what's possible and what already works. When it comes to consumer awareness, you touched on the subject, but uh, what kind of best practice do you have you found out when it comes to moving the consumer's awareness? I think that um, providing the right information is, is one thing, but also providing it in a way that is relevant for the consumer and that is focusing on certain hooks that will encourage the consumer to adjust their behavior. I think that that's a key part of have, that information. Have you done campaigns or is it the, the participating brands that have made campaigns or to are date, you collaborating? Yeah, both. So right. to date it's the individual organizations are doing those campaigns and as next steps we're looking for both close cleaning and also for reuse and recycling at collaborative communications such that we get them the science about the environmental and, and also the ethical improvements, those correct in terms of the campaigns, but that then that can be shaped based upon the right messaging that different companies might want to use, etc. What made the UK government to launch this project in the beginning? Um, really the, um, the clothing roadmap is part of a broader approach to trial whether working across as a sector product supply chains for high environmental impact products will be effective in, in reducing those impacts. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, this is part of the UK government's broader approach at seeing whether that approach will, will be um, a useful approach to use. So the clothing roadmap has been one of 10 products where this roadmap approach has been trialed. Because we want to really understand the facts in terms of both the environmental and the ethical impacts and where it's most effective to target our attention, we've been very conscious to generate really useful uh, but also scientifically accurate information and in doing that we go into things in a lot of detail and that has showed us where there are gaps. And, and therefore we're looking to, 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 to fill those gaps or we're looking to encourage the industry to fill those gaps. So for example, a current one that's a challenge, we've um, just been running a study looking at the um, fibers and fabrics that are currently used in clothing to identify the sustainability pros and cons. And when you go outside of cotton and polyester as the two dominant fibers, it's really difficult to find accurate, consistent information on the environmental and the ethical pros and cons. 
demand. So that's an area that needs a lot of development and is very appropriate for the industry to work on a collaborative basis to, to resolve in the future. Since we're connected to the U uh, European Union, will you share the information and so on that you're finding? Yes, everything is in the public domain, so anyone in the EU, anywhere in the world can, can use it as they wish. Did, did you include the corporate clothing from the beginning? Yes, we included all types of uh, clothing. Um, we could see from the beginning that corporate clothing could be a possible opportunity area because of its separate collection routes in some instances. So um, we wanted to make sure we, we particularly looked at that. So yes, it was included for that reason from the beginning. What do you hope for, for the future? I hope that uh, in the future that no matter what store you go into to buy your clothes, that all the offerings that are on the market are actually sustainable in a truly credible sense and that we don't even have to be thinking about these things anymore and we're not calling it sustainable clothing, it's just inherently built into the clothes.